Welcome back to that sound that the internet used to make. This video, I'm going to show you how I painted this Iron Man from Senex. You can find links to Senex's website and his Patreon in the description below. This will be a slightly different video, a little bit longer than normal, but I'm going to try and keep you guys entertained the whole way through. Hopefully that you enjoy that video, and you know what happens if you don't enjoy the video. Oh, oh yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. It's bloody free, man. Okay, check, check, check. So in order to paint this miniature statue, I'm going to start off by painting the base. I'm going to base coat that with the brown and I'm going to pretty much just lighten that brown as I go along. So you can see me spraying the highlights from the top using the same concept as anything else really, making sure there's a light from one side and a shadow from the other. This is a dry brushing technique, this helps grab a lot of the edges and puts on colour in, just into the highest points of the statue. I'm then going to wash that piece. All the crevices and creases get filled with the wash. In this stage, I'm not trying to be careful with the wash, just making sure it's not pooling into massive pools, but when it does pool, I want it to pool into the crevices. Once I've dried that, I'm going to come back and dry brush it one more time. With something like a rocky base, you want to have as many layers as possible, as that's just going to add to the illusion. Obviously, you don't want to keep it all consistently brown, so I've added a slight greenish yellowish tint to the next dry brush phase, and I'm going to then add progressively lighter versions of this right up until the tips of that rock. I'm then going to add another wash over the top of that, and this is going to be a reddish brownish kind of wash. This is going to add another layer of colour to these rocks. Making sure I get that into all the creases and crevices. Then I come back with another dry brush, this time a lot more selectively, only on the highest points, and that is the rock done. Now I'm using a dark silver, and I'm just going to base coat the whole rim around the bottom of this model. Usually we base coat rims black on models, and it is kind of the thing that finishes off models. So if you're leaving your base unpainted, unless it's an artistic choice, usually it will take your model to the next level just by painting this base. I have to be careful with this, making sure that I don't go over the rock that I've just painted, but this is why I chose to do this just after, so I had more freedom with messing around with the washes and the dry brushing on the rock earlier. As for Iron Man himself, I'm going to start off with a base coat of black. I have also gloss cleared that black as well, and then I'm going to spray paint silver over the top of that. This will give me a great metallic base to start off with. Unfortunately, as I am so professional at making these videos, I forgot to film putting the red over the top of the silver. Let's just imagine you saw that footage. Now I'm taking a wash and I'm airbrushing that from the bottom. Again, I'm picking a light source. The light source is the top of the model and the shadow is coming from the bottom. I'm shading in deeper reds at the bottom of the model and lighter reds from the top of the model. This will help create the illusion of depth. Progressively getting lighter and lighter with the reds as I go higher up making sure they go towards an orange and not to a white, otherwise you'd be pink. And then I'm going to stick him onto the base so that I've got something to hold him with and I've got a clearer picture of everything that's involved. Now I'm going to start doing details. Detailing on a piece like this is sometimes fun, but sometimes time consuming. You can spend a lot of time just putting in small details here and there and making sure that they're perfect. Just make sure you get those details in. At the end of the day, as long as you've put paint in the right place, most of the time it's going to end up looking pretty decent from a distance. Usually when I'm painting things like this, I'll be watching something in the background. Most of the time I'm watching YouTube. I like to watch long YouTube videos, videos that are about painting, videos that are about printing. I like to watch videos about Fortnite too. But you need to find something when you're doing this kind of work that actually interests you, perhaps a ground affected video, to keep yourself engaged the whole way through. This can be quite a tedious part of the job, but sometimes it's quite enjoyable to just put something you enjoy watching on the TV or on your phone and put your earphones in and just sit back and slowly put details into a model. As you start doing this, you start seeing the model come together more and more, and this will help keep your enthusiasm up so that hopefully by the end of the model you're finishing on just as much of a high as you started the model on. Here you can see that I actually chose the wrong silver so I'm going back and I'm redoing all the silvers that I'd originally done 
In this case, I'm just really doing the highlights and allowing a bit of shadows to stay behind, but mostly trying to change the color of that silver. It was just too dark, and being a comic book character, I want Iron Man to stand out and be fairly bright, but still look kind of realistic. You can see me make a mistake here and there, and you'll see me pull out another brush and wipe off the paint. And that's one of the nice things about acrylic paints, is that they're quite forgiving. If you make a mistake, as long as the paint is still wet, you can always come back and wipe it off with a little bit of water or spit, depending on your preference. So usually, a lot of people would go through and do most of all the silvers first, and then come and do the next colour. Unfortunately, I'm an extremely impatient person, so I go back and I start using gold already. And I just want to start seeing how the picture is coming together overall, make sure that my colour choices were good colour choices. Um, this is something that I do throughout my pieces. It just really helps me to make sure that I'm using colors in the right places where they should be, as well as making sure that the values of those colors are going to be good enough with each other. Now that I've got that gold out, I figured it was a good time to just quickly do those letters. Nothing too fancy on them, and I'm not even being too careful with painting them either. Your eye and your attention is not going to be on the letters on the base. It's going to be on the model. So back into some fine detailing now. Um, really with the model this size I'm actually not able to hit the details exactly as they are so I'm kind of making them up a little bit as I go along um, but it still works out you can kind of bend the rules a bit with the smaller you make a model you can kind of cheat a little bit with how you add the highlights and shadows of areas speaking of cheating here I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight I'm taking an orange and I'm mixing it into that red so that our value of the highest highlight points on this model are quite a lot higher than the deepest points. This is just gonna help force that depth and illusion of depth for anybody that's looking at the model. You can take this really far generally. Um, it depends on how much time you wanna spend on the model. As I said, I'm not, I'm not spending seven days working on a model like this. It would be really cool to do something like this in non-metal metallic and really push it comic book style. Perhaps in a future video, I'll do something similar to that. Making sure that I add that highlights onto the head as well. And again, straight back into detailing. I obviously got bored while I was doing the gold and the metallic parts that I figured I need to take a break and add some more highlights to the model. While I was painting this, I had the reference from Sanex up on the screen. Sanex is a modeler who creates comic and TV show style inspired statues. His fan art is the ones that I started out 3D printing and making Marvel and comic statues. He was really the first person that I actually found out you could even make statues of this kind of caliber. If you like this statue or you think you might like things that he makes, I would encourage you to check in the description. There is a link towards his website and towards his Patreon as well. Feel free to go and subscribe to him. This is not a sponsored content at all, but I do believe that he does deserve to have his work seen and people to see what he does. Here I'm adding a little bit of white into the lights that are all over his body and just constantly boosting the highlights as I go along. I made a bit of a booba on the biceps so I'm kind of filling that in a little bit just to make sure that you don't really notice that I made that booba. And then I'm going to take a wash and generally these aren't the best washes for doing this with but they seem to do a pretty good job. And what I do is I uh, carefully direct that wash into the grooves and only into the grooves. I'm not washing the entire model. I'm just making sure that that wash goes directly into the grooves in order to create more depth in the suit of armor. I'm adding big pools of it where I need deep dark spots and I'm adding thin lines of it and wiping off whatever is left over of that. A little bit of edge highlights here and there goes a long way as well. Um, nothing too crazy as he is made of metal. It's a good idea to have a bit of light bouncing off certain areas and I will go in and add a couple of edge highlights here and there. I also take a bit of a darker silver and go back in and put a couple of scuffs onto his armor. I don't like it to look too crispy clean. Um, I prefer to have a tiny amount of damage but obviously I don't want to take it too far as he's not a battle damage version, mainly just a little bit of dust and dirt and scratches as there's no ways his suit would be perfectly pristine. 
This is a whole long bit, this bit. At the highest point, the light will be the whitest. So at this point, I'm going to start adding a couple of white highlights in very strategic places, namely in the lights and all the bright things around his body and suit. I'm not going to put this as a metallic highlight only because I want those whites to look like they are shining. I need those lights to be bright and I need your eye to not confuse the lightness coming from the lights with the light that's hitting his body or shining off of his armor. This is the part that's actually going to make him look more metallic and I'm going to go over it with a gloss clear. This one is from Army Painter and I'm just painting it on. One of the tips that I can give you for painting a gloss clear is if it's an acrylic based one, I usually add a little bit of water and a little bit of medium to that clear so that it's a lot easier to flow on the brush. That way it also helps prevent brush strokes. Um, it won't completely prevent them, but as long as you kind of keep your brush strokes going in the right direction, you will probably avoid them. Just make sure to keep the paint not too thick on the model. And then I'm using a matte varnish on the rock just so that I can push that contrast between a matte and a gloss finish. That just helps separate the model from its base. And there you have it. And that completes my miniature Iron Man. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. Maybe leave the video a like. And if you didn't like the video, we all know, you just need to f*** off. And oh my god, if I have to say the same sentence over and over again, I'm gonna lose my...